It's an OCR Gateway specimen paper. The paper starts with some multiple choice. This is paper one, which is P1 to four. And the first ones that I'm doing are multiple choice ones, and I encourage you, whenever you do multiple choice, try and answer the question before looking at the answers. Let's go into the video. Which of the following is a contact force? Whenever you tackle multiple choice, always try and answer the question before looking at the answers, but this time, well, we actually have to do that. No, this is uh, two part charged particles acting at a distance. This is when two particles are in contact. So I'll check the others, but I'm thinking my answer is B. Gravity is o over two masses over a distance. Gravity is two masses being attracted to each other over a distance, and magnetism is because of magnetic materials and can be over a distance. So the only one that's contact is friction. Friction is two surfaces being in contact. What's the correct definition for density? This is one of the equations you need to remember. Density is mass over volume. So which one is mass divided by volume? That's B. Just double check that there isn't anything else that seems sensible. No, so that one's got to be B. Which of the following is a vector quantity? Vectors have size and direction. Displacement is the distance from A to B. So this is A, this is B. Is that distance linearly there? A, a distance around the houses could be like this, but displacement is from A to B. So A, displacement is the vector. Distance, as I just said, is in any given direction. Mass, you can't have a negative mass, and that is your acid test of whether it's a vector or a scalar. Can it be negative? Well, if it can, then it's probably a vector. Speed, well, no, speed, you could think about speed in the opposite direction, but that then would be a velocity. Would that be the vector equivalent of speed? So the answer is A. Which one correctly describes an electrical current? Again, this is really, secretly, is an equation. Current is the change in charge over time. Okay, so this is our way to remember this. So this is a rate of flow of charge. Now, okay, this seems kind of okay, doesn't it? Because this would be coulombs per second. That would be an amp. Those are the units, though. So the definition of a current is A, a rate of flow of charge. Q stands for charge. Rate of flow of energy? No, it's not that. Energy in circuits is the voltage. Energy is per uh, voltage is energy per unit charge. So it's not that. It's not a current in it. Rate of flow of potential difference. Potential difference doesn't flow. It's a difference in electrical potential between two points. New scientific theories such as J.J. Thomson's model of the atom can take time to be accepted, which is not an important thing for a new theory to become widely accepted. No outliers? Well, not really, because actually most experiments will have outliers at some point. Peer review, now that is important, okay? Publishing results, yeah, that's pretty important for changing theories. Reproducibility, so somebody can do a different experiment and get the same findings. That is important. Ah, now the question asks, which is not an important for a new theory to be accepted, so the answer is A. This is an important one for actually checking back and reading your question. What exactly are they expecting you to answer? What exactly are they asking you to do? Which diagram shows the correct field lines for a bar magnet? Well, okay, they're all the right shape. They're all the okay shape. Now, what do we need to know about field lines here? Field lines have arrows on them that point from north to south. So which one has arrows that go from north to south? Not this one, going towards north. Not this one, they're going towards north. Not this one, they're going towards north. So this one from north, aha, to south. So this is our correct one here. Which situation provides 10 watts of power? So this is, we've got to remember the equation that links power, energy and time to do this question. Power is energy over time. So all I really need to do then is work out which one of these gives me 10 watts. So 1200 divided by 120 gives me 10, so it's going to be P. Uh, what about Q? Well, 600 divided by 60 also is 10. So both situations do that. Now here's why we should always make sure we answer the question fully before we look through the answers because if I'd have just done that bit and not bothered to try that then I would have picked B. But it's clearly not B, it's both situations. D. The graph shows four journeys. It's a distance time graph. Essential skill for dealing with motion graphs. First thing you do is look at the axes and figure out what type of uh, what type of graph you're actually looking at. Distance versus time. Which one has the highest, highest average speed at Q? Now, for a distance time graph, the gradient is equivalent to the speed. 
Okay, at Q. This is Q here. So the highest speed at Q is going to be line A. Student builds a step up transformer. The transformer has 20 turns on the primary and 40 turns on the secondary. The input voltage is 10 volts. Okay, the, why does the transformer not produce the expected 20 volt out, output voltage? Hmm, well this seems to be at first glance one of these. The number of turns on the primary over the number of turns on the secondary equals the voltage on the primary over the voltage on the secondary. But then you look through that and if you do that calculation you do get 20 volts out. So, okay, um, that probably isn't the way to tackle this question then. So what is it about? What is it about? Well, it's about that thing there. Really, this is just testing. Do you remember transformers must be AC? You must have a changing current to produce an alternating... You must have an alternating current to produce a changing magnetic field to then go ahead and produce the... Uh, induce the alternating voltage on the secondary. So this is the issue here. A, the input voltage is DC. Have a little look through this then. Input voltage is too high. Well, no, if I work for that, it wouldn't be that. Input voltage is too low. No, all the numbers give us the right thing here. The ratio of coils is incorrect. All the numbers give us that. It is the DC there. Which statement describes a simple model, simple model of the Earth's atmosphere? The density of the atmosphere increases with altitude. No, it's not that. The density gets less as you go up. Temperature of the atmosphere remains constant with altitude. No, that's not really what it's driving at. That's not the... It, that's not the thing, it definitely gets colder as you go up. Um, the atmosphere is a single layer of gas of uniform density. That seems pretty sensible, okay, the idea that we're basically at the bottom of a big column of liquid, a column of fluid, and that fluid has a uniform density. The atmosphere is thick compared to the size of the Earth, that doesn't make sense. The atmosphere is a very thin thing, really. It's only really breathable up until about five miles, and the Earth is obviously much, much, much um, larger than that. So I'm going to go for C in this case which is the correct answer, of course. So, sorry, a student investigates the extension of pairs of identical springs. Which pair will have the same extension as one spring forward with a force of five newtons? Well, it's not going to be these two. Okay, that's clearly going to have more extension. That's going to have less extension. So in this case, right, we're just deciding between these two. Well, what's the case with springs? This is a set of parallel springs, and this is a set of series springs. Now this is going to be less stiff. It's actually going to be half as stiff and this is going to be more stiff. So the point we're trying to think of, we've got five newtons pulling on it and we want the same extension as one spring with five newtons. So it's going to be B because this will extend more than one spring. This will extend four times more than one spring with five newtons, whereas this will extend the same as one spring with five newtons. Okay, tricky one that one, but I'm sure you can get that. Hooke's law is quite a simple one, really, to get your head around. Okay, number 12. Two forces act on an object at right angles to each other. This is a scale diagram of the two forces. What's the resultant force? Well, what you would use here is a ruler, you can see this is five, this is three, the resultant force of these two is this line here, just don't think that's done very well, this is not, <laughs> this is specimen paper so they're not checked as rigorously as others, okay, um, this probably should be four centimeters long and this three, but if I do this with Pythag, which is the most obvious way to do this type of question, See, A squared is B squared plus C squared. In other words, this is A and this is B and this is C. So 4 squared is 16, 3 squared is 9, so the answer is 25. So A is the root of 25, which is 5 newtons. So the answer is A. Really tricky one. I'm, I have to forgive my class now because there was a misprint in this one here. Hope that makes sense to you all. The graphs show uh, journeys of four cyclists. Okay, aha, these are velocity time graphs. Okay, so I'd need to use a different set of skills than my distance time graphs from earlier on. Velocity time graphs, which cyclist travels the furthest? So to work out which one travels the fur furthest, we need to use our rule about velocity time graphs, which is that D 
distance traveled is the area underneath the graphs. So what we do then is we just split them down into triangles and squares or rectangles and then it's just a case of working out the areas and summing them. So this might take just a few seconds to do. So 2 times 4 is 8 but divided by 2 because it's a, it's a triangle is 4 again. 2 times 4 in that section. So the total distance is 12 meters. Here 2 times 2 is 4 but divided by 2 because it's a triangle. Here 2 times 4, that's 8, that section. Here again, that's another 2. So that one is 12 metres as well. Here then, uh, 2 times 3 is 6 divided by 2, so that's a 3 metre section. And um, this is 3 times 2, which is a 6 metre section. This is 3 times 3 divided by 2, which is a 4.5 metre section, so that's 13.5 metres. And then lastly down here, 2 times one, so that's a one section. Two, one, two, three, four, five, six, six times two is a 12 meter section, that's one. So this is a total of 14 meters. So the answer is D, D travels the furthest. It's got the largest area underneath the graph. Area underneath a velocity time graph is the distance traveled. A boy swims in a lake of a depth of one meter. What's the change in pressure if he swims at a depth of two meters. Uh, assume that G is 10 and the density of water is a thousand kilograms per meter cubed. So the change in pressure if he swims at depth of this. So he's gone from one meter to two meters. So this is using the equation which you get given. Pressure in a column of liquid is the density times G times the height of that column of liquid. I'm not sure if I've written those the same way around as they're given in the book, but that doesn't really matter. So, but we remember we're looking at the change in, in pressure. So there's two ways. You could work out the pressure here and the pressure here, but that would be two calculations. Or you could just realize that it's actually proportional, the pressure, to the height. So if we've doubled, doubled the depth, we've doubled the pressure. So I'm just going to use a kind of change in height being one meter. Okay, so here we go. Density, ah, before I do this though, check that my units are okay. I've got kilograms, I've got newtons per kilogram, I've got meters and I've got meters, and I've got meters cubed. So I'm okay to use the units that are here. I don't need to do any converting before I do this calculation. 1,000 times 10 times one gives me yeah, 10,000 pascals, which is answer C. Again, I didn't look at the answers, I did the calculation before I picked my answer. A loaded trolley with mass of 10 kilograms travels at 10 meters per second. What happens to the kinetic energy of the trolley if the speed doubles and the mass halves? So you don't actually need these numbers, okay, but you can use them. Um, you need to use the equation for kinetic energy, which is kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So why don't we need to actually use the, um, use the numbers because if we double the speed, then we quadruple the kinetic energy. The mass halves though, so we've only got doubled the kinetic energy now. So the answer is A. You can do this though, because in this case they've given you the numbers, so you can actually work out like this. Well, work out before, so half times 10 times 10 squared gives us, half times 10 is five, times 100 gives us 500 joules. And what if we, double the speed and the mass halves. Well, the speed is now going to be 20 meters per second. The mass halves, so that's going to be five. So I can put all those numbers in again. Okay, go half times five times 20 squared, which is, it's partly because I'm lazy, but partly because the calculator makes fewer errors than I do. So now a thousand joules which is double the kinetic energy. I hope that was useful to you. I'm Kit Betts Masters at Gorilla Physics. It's all about you understanding more, so you get more confident, you're gonna enjoy physics more, really, and then you're gonna do better in your exams. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned for some more.